I wanna talk about what you should and shouldn't be doing with contouring. For me, myself, I used to actually teach this completely different and I was one of the first people that sold um, contouring makeup and I have learned kind of over the years of selling it over the last, you know, eight or 10 years. Some of these do's and don'ts you probably or maybe haven't heard before. Um, I didn't know most of this and I even was one of the very first people to sell contouring makeup and I taught it in a completely different way than I see it now. So this might be a fresh take, but I think this is gonna be far more helpful than a lot of what I've learned um, from watching YouTube videos on contouring or learning contouring from traditional makeup theory. This is uh, taken from a completely different theory and I find it to be far more helpful. So if you wanna learn about that, keep watching. One of the things that I find people actually use contour for far more than they use it to contour is they use it in a similar way to bronzer, depending on how you see bronzer. Some people see bronzer as a, something you apply in the areas on your face that the sun hits you. Um, some people use bronzer to just kind of give them a self tan, overall tan. Typically contour and bronzer have different names for the products, but I find that they're used very interchangeably. In this video, I don't wanna teach you um, the difference. I think it's, it's basically a moot point. It doesn't really matter what it's called. Um, what matters is how to balance your face and where to use these products in what color or tone on your own face. So I've seen a lot of these face maps going around. I, I even made face maps back in the day, where to put everything. This is actually really unhelpful. Um, yes, we all have, uh, you know, we mostly all have two eyes, a nose, and a mouth, but as, aside from that, we have such different sculpt to our face that the way that we add shadowing or contouring and the way that we add highlight is going to be different, not just because of the sculpt of our face, but also just because of the the actual skin, complexion, sun damage, everything goes into why we put the things where we put them. The current perspective or trend on contouring is basically just um, how to get a Kardashian face on your face. The reason that I find that really limiting and really imbalancing for people is because there's so many beautiful shapes of a face while that shape is very beautiful to just apply it indiscriminately to every face will tend to look dirty, it will tend to look messy, um, it will be very hard to blend, and ultimately it just won't be bringing out what's really beautiful about your face and balancing your own face. One of the trends that has become really popular is basically the idea that as long as you put the contour just a little bit higher on your face, um, you're going to get a facelift. So as long as everything's applied higher, it's going to lift your face. I have a problem with this for two reasons. One, I don't know that everyone needs a lifted face. I don't know that that's even how facelifts work. And two, I don't find that that works for everyone. That placement may work for some people. And I actually think it's for a different reason, but it isn't going to just indiscriminately give everyone the look of having a facelift. A lot of what we're taught with contouring also is based on um, what the most prime contouring would be for one particular face in their 20s or teens. It's really not well applied to anyone beyond that or anyone with any different shape to their face. For instance, um, having a really chiseled out um, cheekbone is, is and can be very beautiful. Although as you age, Typically, your cheekbone gets more chiseled out. You lose volume in your face. Your, your bones tend to stick out more as you age because you have a lot less of that flexibility in your skin. You have a lot less voluptuous skin. So where it might have given you a lot of balance to get a little bit more of a chisel before, it's now actually pushing your balance off because it's creating a gaunt look or kind of a gray look. Oftentimes also, as we're aging, we are losing vibrancy in our skin. So when you were young, maybe you needed to use a ashy tone to get that contoured look. And now if you were to use an ashy tone, it would just make you look dead. 
So you want to definitely be assessing how you're applying this, depending on how your face currently looks, not how you used to do it, and not how someone who is 20 years old is doing it, and specifically looking at what is the actual sculpt of your face and what are the things that you want to highlight and diminish. I think the main thing that contouring is typically actually used for by the masses and not makeup artists is to even the skin tone, to add a little color where you want a little color. And ultimately, I think that's the far better way to use it. If you wanna learn a little bit more about how I do that, go to my complexion video. I use a very unique theory and approach to makeup and if you have found a lot of frustration with the way that you were you have been doing your makeup and the results that you're getting whether it's how your makeup lasts how you look in pictures how you look in various lightings um, that you don't look like yourself that your makeup has texture and you don't like that you just want it to look like skin you have come to the right place i can help you with all of that if you want to start from the beginning, I highly recommend going to my theory videos or you can just catch up on the complexion video and I can kind of teach you how to do what we're talking about here.